Okay, we're going to walk through how the Sentinel-1 STEM integration works and take a look at what that would result in after a webhook is fired and processed by the integration code and sent into Sentinel-1. So we have an active event here. And I'll just bring up, this is the, the debug interface for the integration. So we're just going to flip this detection to the lockout status. You should see the status in the left here change from access restored, locked out. So that tells me that the JSON was sent and the HTTP 200 means it was sent to the endpoint for Sentinel-1. So let's head over there. This tab, search. So we're currently looking at the Singularity Data Lake. This is where all third-party events will get aggregated and sent. I've done this a few times so we can see other examples. So if I click here at the top, we can see it is being parsed correctly. This is using the HEC format. This is a specific format that's compatible with Splunk is being used to encode the data with the vendor, that's Saperna. The data set type is JSON, and then the specific fields that we want to expose inside the SIM. So you can see them all here. Uh, detailed information about the shares, the protocol involved, the number of files, the cluster name. Keep scrolling down. The state is locked out. The timestamp of the detection, the SID in this case, and the username. So this is what it would look like. Now you can also create custom triggers. And we've gone ahead and done that. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So I'll just expand it. You can get a summary here, but I'll walk through the editing of what the custom trigger would look like. So give it a name, Superna Zero Trust. We're going to map it to critical. The scope is in our test account and the default site. We're going to use a query. This is a simple query saying, well, if it's from Superna and the state is locked out, we could have picked any of the fields to create this trigger, but I'll use the obvious one, a locked out situation. Now I want to treat this as a threat because we've already determined that it is. We'll treat it with the malicious threat policy. And go next. This is the summary and it's currently already activated. Once this is in place, this will start to create detections based on the SIM logging trigger that's been created here. And every time the state changes or it's restored or locked out, we'll get a SIM message that will get parsed. And then this automatic uh, parsing rule will fire and create a detection. So if you have any other questions, you can reach out to us and get more information on the Sentinel-1 integrations.